Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply, and this video is to bring you a closer look at the Sauce number 208 US 26D hinge. Sauce is a name that is uh, synonymous with concealed hinges. Um, I can't think of other people uh, at all who um, whose name would be more synonymous. This has been copied cloned and evolved uh, by other people. This is the uh, this is a beautiful hinge. Now there are it's been evolved in a way where other manufacturers give you the ability to um, take a concealed hinge and adjust it. Uh, I have been told secondhand from people who uh, from a person who is the sauce rep that Sauce will never entertain such an idea. And I'm of two minds of the concept of an adjustable concealed hinge. First, it's not broken, don't fix it. It's not broken. Does it need some improvement? I'm not sure it does. Um, I think what the ability to adjust it in three dimensions does is give people the ability to say, oh, I can adjust that hinge. It's therefore superior. I've, I have reviewed um, more than just one of those adjustable hinges, and they seem really great, but I'm very suspect in terms of the long-term health of the door when I have screws, mechanical screws, that, are depend, that, that the door is dependent on to keep it true, flush, plumb, level, and square. Okay, I'm, True, plush, uh, flush, plumb, level, and square. I'm not real happy about the concept that a screw is going to keep my door where I need it to be. Now I don't have long-term data. I don't know I don't I've not heard people say yeah that those darn hinges keep coming loose. I've never heard that um, but I know these don't and I can tell you that I've never seen one of these fail except for this gentleman who's purchased three of these. His client uh, is selling their home and it came up on the uh, on the inspection, the door is literally dragging across the floor, and he brought in a photograph, and that hinge is literally, literally bent, where the door leaf is lower than the hinge leaf. And I explained to the client that I have hung on sauce hinges, 3070 16 gauge doors with three quarter inch granite laminated to the face of the door a mall application where the granite wall needed to completely blend in but there needed to be a means of egress um, on the one side and we threw sauce hinges at it and that door has been swinging for 15 years okay not high volume use but nonetheless um, and I said um, half jokingly did someone sit on top of the no I says did, were, was someone doing chin ups on the door and he looked and says yeah, what happened was the children were, it, it's a door that has a bookcase screwed to the back of it, and the children were sitting on top of the bookcase. So, it's not broken, don't fix it. Don't, don't sit on the door either, but nonetheless. So this is the 208, it's a fairly petite size hinge. Um, and I think what people like about the 3D adjustability is, as you study this hinge, the thought occurs to most people immediately is, Oh my gosh, I have to be right on. I have to, I'm not sure if I can be that accurate with my routing. You need to be spot on. There's no tolerance. Um, there's no margin. There's no ability to adjust. But when it is installed per the template, which is in fact an easy template to decipher after you study it, if it's your first time, um, there's really only one cardinal rule that you have to follow with these. And as long as you do that, you're good. And it's really just referencing the edge of the door. Your back side of the hinge cannot be bigger than a certain number then this is going to work flawlessly. They even have uh, templates that you can buy from them. If you search our site for Sauce 208 template, you'll definitely find it. I have never bought one of their templates. I've always made my own because these are easy to mortise. You just have to observe the back set and then make sure your center line is accurate as well because it's only a two-step requirement to install these. And I'm going to call one of them the body prep and then the plate prep. Okay, I only need to do the body of this hinge and then come back and do this plate prep that's here. But we'll look at the template in a moment. Um, sold as each. This is a relatively inexpensive hinge. We're going to look at the nomograph as well. How many of these do I need for a door that weighs 60 pounds? You know, a question like that. You'd use three would be the answer. But we'll dive into that. Um, let's 
migrate to the screen view uh, where we can look at the supporting documents for this item along with scrutinizing the extended description a bit further. Okay, so this is indeed the item that we are looking at in the site. And this part of the video is to serve as um, scrutinizing the supporting documentation. First, the SAUS 208 is for use in wood or metal applications. Um, you can use it in a metal door. You're going to have to specify machine screws. Our hinges are found in many applications where flush, fit, compact size, and smooth operation are necessary features. SAUS invisible hinges will open 180 degree and are a single action hinge. That's true. Dimensional properties. This is from this video is from the factory. I don't know how old it is, um, but it's a good, a very nice overview showing. You know, this this gentleman is applying the uh, template to the jam, so it's it's you know it's easy to do in the sense that this video while this video is ten minutes long, um, you know it is a nice overview of the product line itself. So if you if it's your first time, I would recommend reviewing that video as well. Um, most certainly. So basic dimensional properties are here of the hinge. It's nice to know all of these dimensions because you'll need to know to mortise your door. Um, but what we'll do is we'll slide over to the cut sheet, which is really a template. So here's here's the cardinal rule that we were that I was mentioning earlier. 532nd, if exceeded, the door may not open from the edge of the hinge to the edge of the jam. You cannot exceed that. Okay. And then you've got the rest of the math that is going to fall together. You know, once you once you go to a dimension here, your back set, you everything else will fall in place. You know, this becomes 964ths because this becomes 2964ths. Those are fixed dimensions, obviously. Um, and what I was mentioning earlier about the body prep and then the plate prep, when you see it in a plan view and then in a right side cross section view, you get the idea of what you start talking about. And you don't need but, you know, for this hinge, you need five dimensions, really. Well, you need six. This, this is number one. This has to be done correctly. Okay, so obviously cardinal rule because the door just won't articulate to the open position. You need to know the two and three quarter overall width of the plate. You need to know, you need to know the five eighths, five eighths width of the plate. So now you've got the length of this portion and you have the depth of this portion, uh, the, the width, and now you have the depth of this portion. But first, you're going to prep the body. 1 in 11 30 seconds, overall width. And I'm seeing that centered along the center line of the hinge. You'll do it to the same width because it's not called out at anything else other than 5 eighths. So 1 in 11 30 seconds, length. 5 eighths wide and then your depth is 29 30 seconds that's your first prep so on your door you're going to mark your hinge center lines and then you're going to set your template and you're going to prep it this this width uh, this length this width to this depth then all you have to do now is go two and three quarter overall width same five eighths nine thirty seconds thick now what i always do when i machine hardware is i will always put the caliper on the equipment before I route anything. That not that the template's wrong or out of date, but it could be out of date, and it's not impossible that it's not wrong. This was probably drawn a thousand years ago. So this document at this time is over two decades old. It's not changed. However, you might also look at this and say, wow, that document's over 20 years old. It must have changed. So I like to verify what I do before I do it by putting my caliper on on the hardware itself okay so you mark your center line you observe this cardinal rule and then you're off to the races now since and if you have any questions on that feel free to reach out 
Um, since we're talking about, and then all of these other dimensions, A, C, F, H, I, we've talked about, okay? The B dimension and the, and the G dimension, let's go back to the cut sheet. The B dimension is 2964, as I mentioned earlier, it's fixed. Then the I dimension is 364 of an inch. So that's going to have your door nice and close. Okay. Now, that covers the hinge itself. Let's talk about quickly the other finishes that are available. So this hinge can be done in a gold-plated finish. If you are of the persuasion, you can get them gold-plated. Um, there's your template right there. That's a neat little gizmo. Now, what makes these templates handy is they give you these two removable pins. So when you, the pins are in place, you are getting your body prep. Okay? And when you pull those pins out, you will then get your, your plate or your face prep. So it does automate the laying out of all of the dimensions. You need to strike a center line, attach your template to the door or frame, and then route. You don't have to measure anything. You don't have to lay anything out. It will give you the proper back set as well um, because of these stop pins that they have. So that, you know, it's, I've always made my own. Um, but I've always made my own because I have a particular application. And what I mean to say is I would make one long template that would be out of one by poplar that would be so many inches wide and it would be seven foot long. And I would make all of this into a single template that I could apply at one time rather than having to reposition the template multiple times. And, you know, while I've done that in the past, I've made templates, you know, to suit my needs. For the average person doing a couple of openings, yes, this is what they're going to want to have. So it's really inexpensive, whatever the price is at the time you're seeing this video. So gold-plated, polished stainless, satin stainless, unplated uh, brass. Well, wait a minute. I'm thinking unlacquered brass. This is just raw material, unplated. Uh, why would you want unplated? Because you're going to do your own finish. That's why. Oil rubbed bronze. Polished nickel. Satin nickel. Black. Polished chrome. Satin chrome. The hinge we're looking at. Polished brass. Satin brass. Antique brass. So lots of finishes. Now, let's take a look at some other supporting documents from the item that we're looking at. It can be any of them, actually get to the manufacturer's page here and fire that up. Then we're going to open up the full the product catalog. Now this is not only a tour through all things sauce, but there's a particular page that to me is the most um, important document when it comes to sauce. This document, this nomograph, has been developed to assist you in determining the correct size and quantity of hinges for your application. Um, really nice to look at this when someone's asking you, how many do I need? So this client has a 208 hinge. Okay. How wide is your door? Because the door width really matters when it comes to... The door width really matters when it comes to all hinges because it is shown to be true that the top hinge carries 70% of the door weight. It's all here, almost all of it. So how wide that door is, is really important and how much, what sort of propensity the width of the door has to take that, op that door and want to do this to it, okay? So that's why that's important to know the door width and the door weight, okay? Didn't really talk about height at all, did they? Um, however, we don't need to talk about height because we have industry standardized definitions for height. And that means for all doors up to 60 inch, 
you'll use two hinges. You will add an additional hinge for every 30 inch thereafter, which means if you've got a 84 inch door or an 80 inch door, you'll take three hinges because it's greater than 60, but not as, but it's less than 90. That's why seven foot doors have three hinges and anything bigger than seven foot six is gonna have four hinges until you get to 120 inch where you'll, where you'll add another hinge. So using this chart, you can just draw your line. I'm dealing with a, I'm dealing with a 36 inch door. That's 150 pounds. And I'm gonna draw that straight line all the way across and then I'm gonna go here. Actually, 150 is a bit heavy. Probably be closer to 120. Come all the way across. And I've got options of what I can use. But now you gotta look at what's your door thickness. Inch and three quarter, okay. You're using a 218 because the 216 is for an inch and three eighths door, okay? So 218 would certainly work. You can use a 220 on that, um, can you? Um, no, you, you, you shouldn't try to force that to fit. So if you've got an inch and three quarter thick door, the question becomes is how many do you need? And we fell in the line of three hinges, okay? Now, if you've got an eight foot door and you are still falling in that same weight, refer to this rule here that's bold, okay? If you've got eight foot doors that are inch and three quarter, you're gonna use four. Um, even though your weight tells you that you don't have to, you need to use four hinges because your door manufacturer will consider the door improperly hung. If the door warps, um, they will, they, you'll, you'll have, you'll have a problem with a warranty claim if, if you claim for warrant, uh, a warranty defect, uh, if you have not hung the thing with the proper quantity of hinges. So be mindful of that. So the nomograph, um, really, really brilliant. Okay, this really details it. Little example if you want. Now the rest of the catalog is kind of cool because you know, sauce does sauce hinges. You know, that's what they're known for. History of history of the hinge. Okay. And they have other items. I have not used any of these latches that you saw earlier. Um, you have literally seen sauce hinges everywhere in the world. There's no question. Okay. These hospital latches, this healthcare material, I, again, I've never used. It seems neat. Um, I can't, I don't have any experience with it. The sauce hinge, however, I do. Applications. Applications for sauce hinges are neat because they're so concealed. Um, okay, an engineering marvel. Now, there is one caveat when it comes to sauce hinges. Before we get to that, I do want to point out that they have fire rated versions. They have non-ferrous versions, you know, that stainless steel we mentioned earlier. Cabinet door applications. This is what I was driving at. They make a spring hinge in three different sizes. In the 216, the 218, and the 220. We did a high-end salon in um, Bucktown in Chicago and uh, every, every one of the door had one of these concealed hinges. That's what the client wanted and that's what the client got. You do have to core rather large into the door to accept the body, but nonetheless, it is a very concealed spring hinge is what it is. Okay. Um, the issue is I don't think it's UL listed at all. I see no indication that it is. So you definitely not use these on fire doors. That's the bottom line. Okay. And just really great information. Now you see here where there's soldier stacking, two of them at the top. That is actually the preferred method. The issue with the, the because go back to the 70% rule I talked about earlier of how much weight's being borne by that top hinge. And there was a saying someone said or I read somewhere that sauce said, I don't care how heavy the door is, just adding, just keep adding sauce hinges to it. It'll carry the load. Um, you might, before you prep this, you might want to talk to your door manufacturer and make sure 
that they don't have a problem with this middle hinge not being in the middle like regular North American uh, construction would be. So be, be mindful of that. They do not have any electrification uh, as well. Uh, so there are no power transfer versions of this. Um, we sell the magnetic door stops occasionally. Those are nice. I've seen those in changing rooms and high-end department stores, residential applications. Then your router templates are here. They will even sell you the router bits necessary and the collet for your temp for your router because the diameter of the bit, the well more so, the outside diameter of the collet is directly related to this size. Okay, you can stick any bit you want in there, I suppose, but the collet diameter and the template, they do make reinforcements. If you're doing a steel door, I've done hollow metal doors, that one I mentioned initially. You know, the manufacturer either man made their own or bought reinforcements from Sauce. Uh, we've also bought these and welded them into doors and frames. Now, that caveat I was mentioning, let's finish up this video talking about the caveat uh, and the um, and its implications on, on using Sauce. So let's switch back to the camera view. Now, before we get to that caveat, uh, little paper template's gonna be included. The, the information that you need is all gonna be in here. Because this is intended for wood, you're gonna get four wood screws. They appear to be maybe a number 10. I'm pretty sure the template indicated the size of the screw. Number eight is what it's indicated. If you need machine screws, you've got to specify that. Those, those are going to be 832 machine screws. Now, here's the caveat. In your mind's eye, think about a door opening and closing. Basically, somewhere inside of my elbow joint is going to be the vertical axis of pivoting that doesn't move at all. Okay, A butt hinge, when the door is closed, will give you a vertical axis of pivoting that doesn't move at all when the door opens and closes. Now, if you will just study that silver pin right there if I were to lay the door down and move that what does that silver pin do that's the vertical axis of pivoting and that actually floats through the opening okay so what why is that important it's only important if you're using other hardware that is being templated off of the hinge vertical axis of pivoting like Certainly a door closer, but a door closer is not going to give you much of a fuss of the small amount of movement on a sauce hinge. But an overhead stop can give you a fuss. Um, I did a project in Manhattan for a client. We did There were 15 doors. They were all sauce hinges. There were 12 overhead stops because it, for Manhattan, a very large apartment, it was you know 1,400 square feet. But that's tiny for some definitions. There, uh, there, were, there were lavatories that had doors that would open into a commode, possibly. We had a, be a bedroom door where the bedroom door opened into bypass that had glass in it. So we really needed to absolutely control the doors. Nowhere to put a door stop in that bed bathroom, that bedroom door opening up into a pair of bypass glass and laid doors. Can't put a floor stop. Would you really trust a hinge pin stop? Okay. Can you use a hinge pin stop with a sauce? Overhead concealed door holder door stops were the only way to go. We had to order the door stops for the sauce hinges, meaning when the manufacturer and they cost more, so be mindful. That's gonna cost you more. Because when the stuff ships, there's not really a lot different about it, because there's not. But the templating, the template that's in that box is based on that special template that special layout. So that's the one caveat that I'm aware of about sauce. Um, I'm not going to end I'm not going to list that a caveat would be um, you've got to mortise it in the correct location. That's carpentry. Okay, so if you make a living as a carpenter, you know, I don't know that you need to rely on the ability to adjust a hinge. It's a great concept. 
but like I said initially, I'm suspect. Um, and, and I'm suspect because I've spent my entire adult life adjusting set screws uh, on decorative trim. My lever came off. Why is that? I don't know. That little thingy in the thingy is gone. The set screw is gone. It came out over time. Decorative tips that are threaded on constantly come out. Trim comes loose. Door closers come loose. It all comes loose. And with the door, with the hinge doing so much of the work, especially with a door closer, really just taking the rack and the load and all of the energy transfer. Um, interesting. But we've sold a bushel load of those um, multi-axis adjustable concealed hinges. People do like them. Um, I, I think I tend to be with sauce. I don't know that I would necessarily um, offer a an adjustable model just to be just to make an adjustable model. I would imagine that they have done extensive testing on that material and they've said, "Great idea. Call me in five years when your door won't stay where it needs to stay, and now you need a replacement on the hinge." In thirty years. This order is the only time a replacement set of hinges had to be ordered for failure. They only failed because people sat on the doors, uh, on the top of the doors. Anyway, so I'm partial to Sauce. They're a simple, no-nonsense company. You call them up. You generally leave a voicemail. Hopefully, they call back quickly, um, or you just call back and you get the person on the phone. If they've got it, they'll ship it out. If they don't, there'll be a lead time. You know, it is what it is. We try to keep some of it in stock, uh, and we'll go from there. Any questions on the sauce? This is their part number 208 in a satin chrome finish or any other sauce product. Please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you.